Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show how you can add controls to your game so that your game can work on the mobile. I'm going to use the cube game that I've created a tutorial on. Currently, it's being controlled by a keyboard, so I can use A and D keys to move my character. There's several ways we can convert this game's controls for it to work on a mobile device. One of them is adding UI buttons that are going to do exactly the same as A or D keys on your keyboard. The other option is adding a joystick so you can use a joystick to control the player movement. And another option is using drag or swipe to control the player. Now let's start by looking at how we can use UI buttons to control this cube. So I have a level base game object here that is used in all of my levels. So let's go inside here and add some UI buttons. So I'll just select a button. I'll call this left. Resize it. Let's make 500 by 500 and I'll anchor it at the bottom left. Now for the visuals, there's different approaches. You can show it or you can just hide it. I'm going to actually hide the visuals for this one. But for a script to be able to see when we click on this button, the way I'm going to hide it is by switching the transparency. That way I can still use ray casting target on that image, even though we don't see it. The button component that we have here, I'm not going to use it so I can remove it. And now we can add a script machine. Let's actually use embedded for this one. And it's pretty simple what we need to do here. So on pointer down, we need to store a variable. So let's use a scene variable and call it movement. It's going to be a float and the default value is going to be zero. So let's set the value for on pointer down to be a value of negative one. Since this is going to be us moving to the left side and then we can add on pointer up. Let's duplicate that and on pointer up, we're going to set the value to zero. So we'd stop moving into any direction. We can go back to our scene and now duplicate this game object. Let's call it right. And for our right button, we need to anchor it to the right. And let's go inside the graph and change the value from negative one to one. That is it for the setup of our buttons. Now we can go to our player script, add a graph. And currently we're using horizontal axis to control the movement. And the values that we get out of it is negative one to one. So that will work perfectly with the movement variable that we just created. So we can add it here and instead of using that get access horizontal, we can use the variable that we just created. One last thing before we test it, I don't have an event listener for my UI inputs. So what I'm going to do is go to the level base and in here I'll go to under UI and add the event system. And that event system is going to be the one that is going to be triggering these on pointer down events. Usually they're added whenever you create a new canvas, but at one point I removed the event system in my setup. So now it is back here and we can test it. So now if I click on the right side, we move right, click on the left, we move left. Okay, that is one way you can do it by using those UI buttons. Now let's look how we can add controllers using joystick. For that, I'm going to use the joystick plugin that I've already created. I have imported it here, but it was made using Bolt. So one thing that I'll have to do, go to project settings and fix missing scripts. So it will convert all Bolt graphs to visual scripting. Click OK. And now if I restart the project, those units are going to be fixed. So to add the joystick, let's go to a level base. And right here I have a joystick object. So I can just drag and drop that into canvas. And you can see the joystick is right here. You can modify the image by making it a little bit darker. Now to connect the joystick to the setup that we already have, we can add another component. Let's select embedded, edit script. And on update, we're going to set the value of movement and the value that we're interested in is the output variable that the joystick has. It's a vector 2 which is x for horizontal and y for vertical. We want to get the x value from the vector 2 and save that as our movement. That is all we had to do to connect the joystick. So now we can use the joystick to control our player.
Now, I said you can also use drag controls to control this player. There's a lot of different setups that you can make, but let's go into our level base and first let's disable this joystick control. And what we're going to do is go to our player script. I'm going to use some super units that I've created for Spock. So I have a four way swipe that you can use. And this won't work that great for the current game. But if you're making a game something like Subway Surfer, where you have multiple lines and you switch in between them, the four way swipe is probably what you would want to use. For this type of game, you might use a touch move and the way that I can configure it. So I don't need to move in the Y direction. And for the X screen, I'm going to actually increase the move value from one to three. So it's going to be more sensitive. Now I'm going to disconnect this value that we have for X velocity because everything is going to be controlled by this super unit. So all of this isn't needed. And with that, we can click play and I can move the cube with my mouse. You can use any of the options that I covered in this video for your mobile game based on what you find more suitable for the type of game that you're creating. You probably have to have different settings that would work better for your game. But I hope this video shed some light on different types of controls that you can make for your mobile game. If you want to see the setup from scratch for the touch move, here's a video that might help you with that.